Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's uh, project is installing a set of lighted whips on a 2022 Polaris Razor Pro R four seater. Uh, the whips are gonna be from Gorilla Whips. I think they're a pretty cool design. Uh, one thing I like about them is this disconnect, a uh, quick disconnect feature here. Uh, so this bottom piece stays mounted on the machine like that. It's got those two pins. They slide down in there. There's a spring in there that keeps it tension on it. And uh, so when you're ready to disconnect the whips before you go into your trailer, or if you need to take the whips off for any reason, disconnect the wire harness, just press down and it releases. So uh, like this video if you like the content of it, and if you want to get notified of additional videos that I put out, make sure to subscribe. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're at the back of the machine here, so there's going to be a couple of things you need to do first in order to get ready to mount the whips. Uh, the first thing is uh, right here, you can already see I already got one of the quick disconnect uh, pieces mounted actually to the frame. So you're gonna take a, there's a, a Torx bolt here. There's two of those body pins there. You can actually then fold this up. Actually show you kind of what I did here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna end up drilling out uh, this hole. Um, the, I used a inch and three eighths uh, speed bit and uh, made that hole a little bit bigger so we could actually get in in there and mount this up. The other thing you're going to end up doing is taking this bed part out. There are four bolts in it here. There's one here. Like that. Uh, this whole bed then will, will come out. And the reason we're going to do that is we're going to be wanting to run the wire harnesses up to the whips. Running them back underneath here and, and tucking them away a little bit. So... Uh, we'll get to that next point. I'll show you how to take this off. So again, the Torx bolt here, two body pins here. I'll show you how that folds up. All right, so we're back here at this body panel here. Again, there's going to be two of the body clips here, and this is going to be a T40 Torx bolt. So we're just going to buzz that off. And then on these body clips, I just like to take a pair of side cutters. If you get in there between... Uh, where there's these little indentations, you can just pop those up and those will come right out just like that. Okay, so now what we can do, show you here. See, I just folded that panel up like that. And then I took my inch and three eighths bit and you can drill that out. And the reason I did that to get this piece up is because the mounting plate that's underneath there it's only down there about an inch or so. So if you have a long um, step bit, which is what I used, some people call it a speed bit. Um, I used that step bit. And by the time I got to an inch and three eighths, the actual end of the bit was actually starting to dig into that tab that's in there that already has a hole um, that's sized appropriately enough for what we need. So once you have that uh, going there, the next step then is to go ahead and get that bottom piece of the quick disconnect for the whips mounted. And we'll do that now. Okay, so here's the bottom half of that quick disconnect. It's got a Allen headed bolt in the, that goes down inside of there. It's a 5 sixteenths. And then it's got a washer and a lock washer and a nut. That nut is, uh, could be 11 sixteenths or 17 millimeter. Either one is fairly close, so. So yeah, we're just gonna drop that down in there like that. Take our washer, our lock washer and the nut. So this tab is already uh, welded to the roll cage at the back here. The uh, older razors used to have um, uh, essentially kind of the same thing. They had a spot in the bed that was um, labeled flag uh, on the plastics. And then underneath that, it had a metal uh, 
plate underneath it to, to help support that. So this is kind of doing the same thing, except for uh, we're not mounting it to the plastic with the metal plate underneath it. We gotta go through the plastic and then directly to uh, the metal plate that's underneath there. Just hold that there. And uh, again, a 17 millimeter. That's it. Now that we've got that, we can get the whip. And again, you can see that just goes down the little slot. You twist it like that, and then it stays. And then when you're done, you again you undo your wire harness, push down and twist, and pull up. And here's that spring that goes in there. Like I said, what that does is that keeps tension on the bottom of this, you put that in there. You can see that there's a little, little spring tension there that helps hold that in place like that. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, so now I got both of those mounted and the next thing to do is to take, uh, again, the bed box uh, off. Let's see, I've got that mounted in there. I'm still kind of leaving those in there because I wanna pry up on that enough to get the wires through there. But again, we're gonna take these four bolts off here, and then that whole bed assembly will pull up and come out. Okay, so now we have the, the box uh, taken out, took those four bolts out, and it kind of just comes out and twists um, around these here. Um, so, the next thing to do is to run the wiring, and I kind of pre-ran it here, the main piece that has the, the controller, the LED controller in it, and two of the wires, uh, parts of the harness that run up to each one of the whips. Um, I will tell you, so those come with 40 inch extensions uh, as part of the kit when you buy it. Um, 40 inches obviously sounds like a lot, but when you start running the wires around, uh, it's, it's not actually a lot. So what I chose to do is I chose to run the wires back here at the back of the bed, above and out of the way of the, the muffler, run them uh, up in here, hidden in the plastics, something like this. You can kind of see there's one of my wires right there. Um, we'll eventually you know, tuck this all in nice and, and zip tie it to the frame and different pieces that are back over here. Um, and then the other thing that comes with the kit is uh, basically a connector here it ties in to where your LED controller is. And this is the spot that you'll run these two wires, power and ground, um, either directly to the battery, or in this case, I'm actually gonna put a lighted rocker switch uh, up at the front of the machine. So these will run all the way up to the front of the machine. And then I'll tie these wires in, along with power wires, um, or power ground and an auxiliary wire, um, or ignition wire that comes off of the uh, Polaris Pulse system, uh, which is basically a bus bar uh, that's at the type uh, at the front of this machine here. So let me show you what that looks like here. So again, I kind of just ran the wires down in through here. I tucked the controller and everything actually in this piece of the frame. Hopefully that shows up. And then this here, that connector is where you'll mate these two together. And then I'm just gonna run it along this frame rail here on the intake side, uh, again, opposite of the exhaust, so that way it doesn't you know, affect any of the wiring. And then once we get to here, we'll drop down into the center console area, follow that all the way up, and then we'll get up to the front of the dash, and that's where we'll put our lighted rocker switch. And then over here, what I've done, again, with these plastics pulled up, you can pull them all the way up and out of the way. I've ran the, uh, the cable that goes through there. Of course, that just fell. Kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'll show you over here. Basically, kind of ran it up like this. Um, you want to give yourself a little bit of room uh, because as you take that that lighted whip in and out of the uh, quick release, you're gonna need this to kind of move a little bit. So that's about, you know, it's just moving an inch or so. That's all you need. Uh, everything else back down into here can be secured. 
Again, we'll pull these back to the frame like that, make everything look nice. All right, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now that we got everything ran and, and zip tied up, pretty much out of the way. Again, this is where I ran the controller through this piece of the frame. Comes up over here. Got it just temporarily wired right now, just to a battery. Make sure everything is working at this point. Again, it comes up here. Let me show you again how that quick release works. You go like that and push down. And remember, I just left about an inch or so of wire sticking out there. So again, when you push that back down, all you gotta do is just tuck the wires right there. It'll be all right. Okay, now we'll just test them out. It comes with this remote. The remote looks like this. Got a power button at the top. Uh, the kind of aquamarine looking buttons are speed controls. The green buttons on the left and right are mode controls. You got the pink button in the middle, which is just auto. The left uh, and right yellow buttons are brightness. And then you can just select these four colors, which is red, green, blue, and white. And then there's some settings and also a lock button. So if you like a particular um, color scheme or a chase or whatever it is, you can just push that and it'll lock it into that. So, all right, so power on. So again, like I said, these go through several different modes. You can speed things up a little bit. I don't, I think that might show up there. Let's speed it up a little bit. Yeah, blue's always hard to kind of see. Slow that down a little bit. So this is the auto, I just hit the auto button so you can see kind of what it's doing. Yeah, everything works for now. So we'll continue on uh, moving towards the front of the machine and installing the lighted rocker switch. All right, I'm back. So now we, I finished up the wiring here. I just wanted to show you where that pulse system is. That's what Polaris uses Pretty much like as a bus bar you can buy those plugs they come with about six or eight inches of wire and then you just tap onto that uh, run it to your switch so we have the new switch installed and i ran the wires down through the center console here and in order to do that there's a couple of bolts here and here there's also a body pin or two up in this area that need to come out there's also a bolt right there uh, that need to come out. What that it does is allows you to pull out on the center console here, allows you to run the wires then down through the center console, out to the back, in between the rear seats and the back. And uh, Polaris is gracious enough to allow us access to the engine compartment. You can remove the uh, upper portion of each one of the rear seats. And then there's two access panels that you take off after that. The top one comes off first, and then the lower portion uh, comes off second. And then you have access to your clutch area. So I ran the wires down through here. You can see that shielded wire there. Kind of come up. And we turn towards the passenger rear side. And as we come up into here, this is where I made my connection to go from my shielded wire to the wire that came with the Gorilla Whips. So I run, run that in uh, wire loom, just zip tie it up to wa other wires that are already here. And then again, as discussed earlier, I ran it across or along the frame rail there. There it is underneath there, down along this side. Once you get to that other one in the back there, just go underneath it. And then that's the connection there to the uh, LED controller that's hidden or kind of tucked away in the, in the frame rail here, as I showed earlier. So that's pretty much it for the wiring. I'll show you how this works now. Um, the way that I wire these, 
wire the switch both uh, to the ignition or to what they call the accessory and also to 24 seven power. So if you're sitting on a dune somewhere or on a trail somewhere, you don't have to have your machine running. You can just throw the switch. And when I do this upper light will turn on and then the whips will turn on as well. And again, that's still in auto mode. So it's just cycling through the different modes that it comes with. And the lower light on the switch is tied into the auxiliary, again, or ignition. So when you turn the ignition on, that'll light up. And then when you throw the switch again, the top light will light up as well. So that's it. I'm gonna get this thing all put back together, get the center console all bolted back together and get these panels put back in and the seats put back in and this thing will be ready for the customer to go for the weekend. So again, like uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more content as I continue to post it, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.